Hello and welcome everybody. In today's Lightroom video, I'm going to take this raw file of this bridge and I'm going to turn it into a photo like this at the end. And I specifically want to share some tips and techniques with you on how to edit night pictures shot in a city and how to deal with the light, what colors you should go for, how you can create differentiation, dynamic and interest. And I'm going to do all of that in just about 10 minutes. Alright, I'm here in Lightroom with the raw file and in night pictures shot in the city you will always have lanterns and lights and very bright stuff, but you will also have quite a lot of very dark areas because it was shot at night. So a really great thing to start out with is to bring down the highlights and to bring up the shadows both by a hundred and that will give you a very neutral and a lot of highlight as well as shadow detail within your picture which is a really nice starting point. Then I would also suggest you to bring up the whites just to get back some of that dynamic. Then the second and very important thing as well is the color and here I see a lot of people just go into the very warm tones and kind of get a look like this, which is completely fine, you know, you can absolutely do that. But I actually prefer to go for a relatively neutral, maybe even a little bit more into the bluish tones kind of look like this and then go into the split toning right here, go to this little box right next to the highlights and add some warm tones there. And the reason you want to do that is because for one, you're going to have a much more natural looking picture because naturally the color is coming from the lights. So by having just a warm color within the highlights, you will kind of get a more natural looking picture. But at the same time, it will create a lot of differentiation because it only affects the highlights. So for example, if I show here, it really just affects the lamps and the highlight parts of the picture and it doesn't affect the background, which is still very blue. And I absolutely love this technique to go for a relatively bluish, kind of neutralish look at the start with the color temperature and then go into the split toning highlights and just add some warm stare. If I quickly show you from before any editing to after, it's already quite a bit more dramatic and quite a bit more interesting. Alright, I do think we have a little bit of a greenish tint though, so I'm gonna go into the tint and just equivalent that out. And then the other things are very much uh, subjective and really depend on picture to picture, but it can't hurt to add a little bit of contrast just for some extra dynamic and pop. And also, if you still don't have enough shadow detail, you could go into the plus blacks as well, or just go into the tonal curve and bring up the darks here, which will just kind of affect the very medium dark parts. Or you could even bring up the shadows in the tonal curve, which will just affect the very dark shadow areas. So I think I'm actually going to do that here and I actually really, really like the look. Then clarity, don't be afraid to go into the minus clarity, but I think here I really like the look of plus clarity in the overall picture. Maybe I'm just going to grab an adjustment brush real quick though and go into the minus clarity here and just brush over some of the distant areas because I don't want to have too much clarity and too much texture there. Then the vibrance and saturation, very much up to you. I do think I'm going to add a little bit. So let's go into the tonal curve and just finish up here. Just play around with these sliders. This light slider will just kind of affect the medium light parts. Maybe just bring that up a little bit. And the highlight slider down here will just affect the very, very bright highlights. So let's go down HSL tool. You could fine tune the color, but I'm not going to do this for this 10 minute ish video. Instead, I'm going to go down into the lens corrections, remove chromatic variation, enable profile corrections and just choose my lens and that will just remove all of the distortion. Then let's go into the effects and it can really help with night pictures to add a little bit of vignetting. Vignetting especially works in night pictures because it sets the overall mood of making everything a little bit more dark, but it also adds more attention towards the center of your picture. So I'm going to add a little bit of a mount here, maybe add the feather, make it a little bit smoother and also bring the midpoint a little bit more towards the center. 
Then camera calibration, you also have a bunch of different options here. Here you could, for example, change the profile, which changes the kind of color and hues and overall look of your picture. And you could even go into the primary color adjustments and really fine tune everything. But because this is a 10 minute video and because this doesn't really have a huge impact and is also very, very different from picture to picture, I think I'm just going to leave that out. And with that said, I'm already done with all of the global adjustments and let's actually take a look real quick from before to after. It's already quite a bit more dramatic, punchy and just looks a lot more interesting, but there is definitely a lot more to be done with the local adjustments. So in terms of the local adjustments, you pretty much have three things that you want to use. First thing is a graduated filter, then you have the adjustment brush, and of course also the rail filter. And the graduated filters are really great if you want to make a very large adjustment to your picture towards the edges, for example down here. I might want to make this a little bit darker, by the way you can hold down the shift key and you will get a perfectly straight filter. And I'm actually going to mix that with some minus exposure here, so it really helps to kind of close out the bottom in this case, which also helps to create differentiation and once again even more attention towards the center. And you could also use this for additional vignetting, for example maybe here on the left, just a little bit more mind's exposure. So that's really what the graduated filter is for. Maybe I'm even going to add a little bit more vignetting just on the right side, because it's oftentimes, you know, you can add vignetting, of course, globally, but there will be areas that you want to adjust locally and just add a little bit more for some cases. Another thing that you could also use the graduated filter for is to complexify your overall color scheme. So for example here, what I'm actually going to do is go and drag one over the top of this picture with a very soft edge and just kind of make it a little bit more bluish in the color temperature. You know, it's already quite blue so I'm really just going to add a hint. And then in exchange add another one in pretty much parallel over the other side of the picture. And because this is below the bridge, uh, I think it could really work to add a little bit more warm tones. You know, nothing crazy, I don't want to make it look anything like this. It's really just a hint. And that way you can complexify your overall color scheme even more in a very very subtle and in a very very non-aggressive way. So once again from before any graduated filters to after, it absolutely helps to complexify and fine tune your overall picture. Then the next thing that you would have is the adjustment brush and the adjustment brush just use it for any area that you want to adjust on that you cannot do with the graduated filters. For example, in this case, I'm going to add one with a little bit of minus exposure. Always want to make sure that your feather is at the 100 as well as your flow. And you want to make sure that auto mask is turned off to get really a smooth and organic looking effect. And here I just think some of these areas on this bridge could be a little bit darker because even though I like this bridge being bright and vibrant overall, it is maybe a little bit low contrast and it could work a lot better just adding a little bit of darkness in certain areas. And it can always be a good idea to just grab a new brush from time to time, adjust your values and just brush over some other areas. Now you could also do this with the rail filters, but if it's really such a large area as I did right here with the bridge, it is usually a better and just faster thing to do it just with the adjustment brush. So once again, from before to after. You could of course also do a lot more things here. You could even add dodge and burning. But speaking of dodge and burning, that is actually something I really love to use the rail filter for. And dodge and burning, in case you're not familiar, it's just making individual parts of your picture, so local adjustments, either darker or brighter. And the reason you want to do dodge and burning within your pictures, especially in eye pictures, is because it can have a huge 
huge difference on the overall complexity of your lighting scheme. For example, in these kind of dark and dull areas, you can create a lot of additional interest, but you can also make uh, some dark areas even darker and create some more differentiation from dark to bright that way. So I'm not going to go too in depth about dodge and burning here because it's a huge thing in itself and I've made plenty of videos about that. But instead, I'm just going to add some dodge and burning, first of all with some plus exposure. And if you want to add plus exposure dodge and burning, especially in eye pictures, I would highly suggest you to add a little bit of exposure with a lot of whites. And maybe even some warm colors because once again, Naturally, the color is coming from the light, so it will only look natural if you also mix that with a little bit of color. So, for example here, maybe this house was a little bit dull, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more color, more whites, and perhaps a bit more exposure. Then let me just right-click and duplicate, and you know, for example, this area right here, there are quite a lot of people, there are lights and everything, and I really like it, but I think it could be even a little bit more pronounced, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of plus exposure over here as well. And this is also a great way to use this dodge and burning. Just make sure that you always make it look natural, so you don't want to just go over the darkest shadows and add a ton of plus exposure, because of course that will not look natural in any way. But instead just make the highlights that are already bright a little bit brighter and just exaggerate the whole lighting scheme once again. So you can, want, by the way, just right click and duplicate these filters and then just drag them over another area. And on this bridge right here, add a few more, just another one over there. Now this is not the perfect example for dodge and burning in an eye picture, because even though there are quite a lot of lights and um, lanterns and everything like that, it isn't really a cityscape with a bunch of windows in houses like this one right here where you can really go a lot further with it and you know once again this is 10 minute edit at least around 10 minutes so I'm just trying to make this very brief and kind of show you the editing and overall just share some tips and techniques with you rather than make the perfect picture and really go super in depth with every single technique that you have. Alright so I think I'm pretty much done with the plus exposure Maybe just another kind of bright one over here. And once again, always remember to change up the values and the sizes so you at the end have a natural looking picture and nothing looks overdone or unnatural. Okay, so I think a last one over here and now I'm actually going to go into the minus exposure dodge and burning. And as you've seen before, I've added quite a lot of minus exposure with the adjustment brush already. But I think I'm going to do it even more with the rail filters. So I'm going to go into the minus exposure here. You could also mix this with a little bit of minus blacks, but you don't have to. And then I'm just going to go over some of the areas that I think could be a little bit darker. You know, you don't have to make it completely black. But for example, by, do, by adding a little bit of minus exposure right here, you have quite a lot of differentiation from this side of the pillar or this wall or whatever you want to call it, to the middle, to the left side, which is quite bright. So it's all about the subtle and the small differences because that way you're going to change your picture in a way that is not overdone. But at the same time, you can create a lot of differentiation and dynamic with it. Alright, I don't think, however, there are too many minus exposure rail filters that are really needed here, especially in the bridge, because I've already added quite a lot of minus exposure with the adjustment brush before. But maybe just here in the water, you know, the left part of this, of this boatish thing, and once again, just adjust the values, and maybe even another one down here. Just a very small one to make this kind of uh, pure area a little bit more contrasty compared to the lights above. 
And I think with that said, I'm pretty much done with the dodge and burning. And with it, almost the whole picture, but there still is a little bit more to be done. In fact, just a very last thing. And that is going into the detail tool, because this is an eye picture. This is shot with a Canon 600D. So it's not really great in terms of dynamic range or noise. So you want to probably go back into the detail tool and just increase the color noise reduction, which will get rid of the color noise, which is absolutely great. It doesn't have any bad impact at all. But maybe if it's still not enough and you have a crop sensor camera or anything like that, you probably do want to add just a little bit of noise reduction as well. I really don't like noise reduction because it removes a lot of the detail and sharpness but it is sometimes a necessity, especially in eye pictures like this, that you've edited quite a lot. And while I'm at it, by the way, let's just add a little bit of sharpening and also bring the masking slider to the right while holding down the old key and just make sure that only the areas that I do want to be sharpened are sharpened. And with that said, I think I'm pretty much done. There are definitely a lot more fine-tuning things that you could do with the HSL tool and the camera calibration, but these kind of things are very, very different from photo to photo, and I can't really show you any tips and techniques there, as I could, for example, with the highlight and shadow sliders or with the color temperature. So I think I'm finally done with this picture here. Let's go into the history real quick and see where we started out with. This is the raw file, a lot more dull, really not much interest going on here, and especially very unpleasing in terms of the highlights. And afterwards, I think it works much better, it's much more smooth, it really, I think this is actually a really cool picture to be honest. And that is pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching, and by the way, if you're wondering why there are fireworks in the sky, I shot this in Basel on August 1st in Switzerland, which is national something, I don't even know it myself, but there was a huge fireworks show and it was quite nice. I got some pictures that I might want to edit for future videos. But for this video, I think this is long enough. So thank you once again very much for watching and take care.